So now we are going to discuss sports textile the design guideline. See there are so many different types of sports and many of you might have already participated in different types of sports and therefore the designing point of view from the designing point of view what we are supposed to do that will be very much appreciable because many of you must have played sports. Now sports are so many types. So I have shown you some types of sports in the previous slides. There are adventure sports like rowing, sky jumping, bungee jumping, mountaineering, then scuba diving, racing and many more. With every sports there is a possibility of sports injuries as well and the injuries could be muscle pain, it could be bruises, someone can fall and it can lead to bruises. Fracture also is quite common in many high activity sports. Tendon and ligament tears are also very common. Ankle sprain and many more type different types of injuries are possible in the case of while playing sports. Now if we see there are so many types of sports and therefore we can classify the sports on the basis of level of activity here and the level of activity could be high, medium and low. Then it could be on the basis of duration of play. It could be of short duration, long duration, too long duration, there could be breaks in between or there are may not be breaks. Like football game, there is a break in the while playing tennis, there could be breaks after each and every match. Whereas in the case of marathon running, it is a very long duration of run, too short could be swimming. So therefore, duration wise also the sports can be divided into short, long, too long, whether breaks could be there or breaks may not be there. Then we can also classify according to the injury, injury possibility. In some sports, it is highly injurious. So possibilities of injury could be there, sometimes they could be fatal also. And then also we can classify them according to climate. By the climate we mean whether it is indoor sports or outdoor sports. So many sports are indoor like badminton is indoor sport, but as there are some football, hockey, these are outdoor sports. So there are different ways of classifying the sports and these are all very important while someone thinks of designing a sports gear for their players. Next comes the category of sports, climate and level of activity. As an example, it is stated here like indoor sports, high level of activity it is there in table tennis, badminton, volleyball as an example. You can add some more also. Indoor sports but with medium level of activity could be gymnastic and very low level of activity could be someone playing chess or weightlifting. So these are all basically indoor sports but the level of activities are different. 
and why they should be important to us, we will come to that. Then there are outdoor sports where high level of activities there in football, hockey, rugby, lawn tennis, sprint, swimming, very high activity level is very high. Then medium level of activity could be jogging or cricket and very low level of activity could be just simply walking or jogging. Now the required characteristics that we expect in a sports year, if the activity levels are different that basically means that the body will perspirate very fast, sweating will start very soon. If the activity is low, sweating may not be there sometimes. With activity, high level of activity, body itself will generate lot of heat as well. So, indoor, outdoor also we have to keep in mind, in outdoor the climate could be different. In the indoor, there is possibility of climate control in terms of temperature or humidity, but if it is outdoor sports, we may not be able to control that. Sometimes the wind may be blowing at a high speed also. So anyway, so these are the different aspects that one has to keep it in mind while thinking of a designing of a sports year. Now obviously there cannot be one unique design that can suit all types of sports. So what is generally required? in sportswear. The first thing is just comfort. The person performance in a sport will depend whether the garment that is he is wearing, he or she, is it comfortable or not. So there what matters is tactile sensations, that is whether there could be irritations or tacky feeling or dampness the other thing is ergonomics of the design. The ergonomics is, is important because it must facilitate the body movement and endurance performance. The third thing is thermal aspects that is you have to ensure that the skin remains dry buffering against temperature swing between periods of activity and rest. That also we have to keep in mind while designing the sportswear for a specific sport. Functionality is another aspect and here the functionality basically means to how to enhance the performance of the, of the player. So therefore, performance enhancement sports wear is also there that can be used by the swimmers, by the football or hockey players and in many other sports this kind of functionality is important to in order to enhance the performance of the player. Next comes protection and durability. To protect the wearer or and the garment for a reasonable time, that is the sports wear should be able to protect the person because there is possibility of injury. You know, while playing a high activity sports, the person can fall on the ground and that could be bruises on the skin. So, if we have a proper fabric which can protect the per person from abrasion, then probably bruises may not be there. This is just one example, there could be many more examples. Also at the same time we have to protect the garment as well, especially from UV, wind, rain, so that whoever buys a sportswear, he would expect certain life that the sports 
wear or the sport uniform should last for a certain period of time and everybody has some expectations about it. The next one is maintainability. It should be easy to maintain. That is washing, whether you need a washing machine to wash it or you need go have to go for no dry cleaning or not. So, these aspects is a part of maintainability and the color and pattern, color pattern and the logo, the logo gives you know, identity that he belongs to this particular club or the person belongs to this country. So, their logo and as well as the specific color pattern both becomes important and it also must give a very aesthetically you know, pleasant look as well. So, all these aspects or attributes we need to keep in mind when we are trying to design a sportswear. Now, when it comes to comfort, the tactile comfort, the ergonomics comfort and the thermal comfort, there are these are three different types. This comfort is a very general term. Comfort is a function of tactile that is sensations, the feel the person gets when he or she wears a garment, the ergonomics where the mobility of the person becomes most important and the thermal insulation. So, now we are going to discuss this relationship between fabric characteristics and the properties or fabric attributes and the relevant properties. So, comfort attribute has three different aspects tactile, ergonomics and thermal. Tactile is basically affected by the fit of the garment, frictional between skin and garment. Ergonomics is related to stretchability of the fabric, the weight and the designing aspect of the garment, because it must give mobility and hence fabric stretchability, the fabric should not be too heavy also or not should be too bulky. So, therefore, weight matters and the, the garment design also matters, so that the mobility could be there. The other th thing is the thermal part where insulation properties, air and moisture, vapor transmission, breathability of the fabric, fabric constructions, the garment design, everything will matter there. When it comes to functionality, what really matters is stretchability and sometimes the drag resistance against air or wind. Especially for a swimmer, the water drag has to be minimized, so that he or she can swim fast. So, and even in some cases the air drag may also negatively affect the performance of a of a player and that has to be minimized. Protection and durability, here what matters is the strength, stretchability, elastic recovery, abrasion resistance, tear resistance, EV resistance, wind proofness, rain proof etcetera. These are the things which will be important when it comes to protection or durability. Maintenance means it should be machine washable and the color should not fade therefore, it should be resistance to UV or sunlight, it should color should not fade because of the use of detergent. So, these are the aspects from the maintenance point of view. Color pattern and logo basically depends upon the fiber and fiber compositions, the type of dye that we choose and 
the way we dye it, whether we go for dyeing of the fabric or we go for printing or we use color thread to produce different designs. These things they are all related to this the color pattern and logo. Now, the stretch is very, very important for many sports. So, stretch in garments optimizes its athletic performance by providing freedom of movement and then it can give you maximum comfort, it can minimize the risk from injury or muscle fatigue and it can reduce the friction and drag. Therefore, stretch is important and there are many ways to introduce stretch into sports garment. One is the fiber that is at the fiber level we can choose fiber which are much more stretchable and that actually depends upon the molecular arrangement of within the fiber and the geometry of the molecular chains or bicomponent fiber with helical cream. These are the things which will affect the stretchability of the fiber. When it comes to yarn, it could be texturized filament yarn or coarse spun elastic yarn that can also affect the stretch. And the fabric, the construction of the fabric can also affect stretch. Generally, knitted structures are much more stretchable than oven structures. Finishing modification of the fabric structure by slack materialization or by stretch laminates or stretch silicone treatment, these can be given and this can also help in introducing stretch. We should know ki why discomfort comes while playing. So, if we look at the chain of events, any physical activity, all sports, most of the sports, not all, are generally there are a lot of some acti physical activities are there. So, this can generate extra body heat and therefore, sweat glands will pump perspirations through their skin pores think it that it is basically a medium to high activity sports so that there is a possibility of generation of sweat that is liquid sweat. And as a result of that the microclimate between skin and garment becomes saturated with moisture vapor. Initially it is the vapor which will be generated from the skin. This vapor will accumulate between the fabric layer and the skin. The microclimate will get saturated after some time because the paper may not be able to pass through the garment very fast if the moisture paper resistance is quite high. Therefore, what will happen? The paper will condense and it will generate liquid, it will be transformed into a liquid and this liquid sweat will be absorbed by the clothing now. If the fibers are hygroscopic in nature, it will absorb too much of it and it can give a temporary relief also, but it will try to hold the liquid within it or if it is made of synthetic fibers, it will not be able to absorb anything. So, no temporary relief one can find. But it will try to transmit the liquid from the inner layer to outer layer. That possibility could be there or the liquid will be, able to, will be spreading over a larger surface area because most of the synthetic fibers that is used that is for hygroscopic fibers like a hygro, sorry, hydrophobic fibers, the spreading of the liquid is fast. Here are certain activities which are listed here different types of sports, the perspiration rate gram per meter square per 24 hour is stated here and resting metabolic rates are also given here. So, just get an idea the what is kind of perspiration that one can expect. A human body 
is generally 1.8 meter square the surface area typically. So, perspiration we can say per meter square is so much in 24 hours. So, roughly we can understand that how much you know perspiration could be there for a given level of sports. Some you know data are available and which we have quoted here. So, is some kind of sports which are let us say tennis is high activity sports and this is the gram of perspiration which could be there in 24 hours. So, we can say per 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes how much it could be there and uh, how to tackle that extra you know, perspiration which is there and the liquid sweat that will be available how to take care of that. The consequence of sweating may sometimes lead to chilling effect, especially in winter this could be there. Why? Now, as heat continues to generate within the body, sweat will generate as we have already you know, discussed. If sweat can evaporate taking latent heat from the skin, the body gets an opportunity to be cooled. That possibility is there. If the possibility of evaporation of the sweat is there and this is possible if the wind is blowing or if the relative humidity is low then probably sweat will evaporate faster and there is a possibility that cooling effect could be there. Otherwise, it may not be there and suppose the garment fails to transport the moisture from the skin to the outside area because of these reasons that it is not windy or humidity is not, no, not really very low. So, in that case the garment may not be able to really transport the moisture from the skin and therefore, the perspiration and excess heat from the body will not be able to escape, it will be trapped within the structure of the fabric. Therefore, what will happen? Dampness in the clothing will occur. The wearer will feel clamminess, the body heat will be lost as wet fabric clinging to the body has high conductivity, because we all know that water has got very high conductivity. So, when the fibers become sweat and the water exists, the conductivity will be very high, the heat will be lost very fast from the body. Consequence is there will be chilling effect, person will feel shivering. So, this would happen especially in the winter months, this possibility could be there that the chilling effect could be there as a result of generation of sweat and the sweat accumulation within the structure of the uniform, this possibility could be there. So, this is what we need to always avoid. So, therefore, design guidelines if we say we have to choose fabrics with better moisture transport properties for pores which are basically high activity spores or medium activity spores and long duration spores like that. So, proper selection of fibers, structure of the yarn, the weave of the fabric all of them becomes important for ensuring that the moisture transport is good. Incorporating ventilations while designing the garment, this is another aspect that is we must have ventilations that means, there is such should be placed. So, the moist air can move out of the body that is from the microclimatic region. So, you should have openings at some places, so the fresh air can enter and the moist air can escape. An optimized evaporation from skin that leads to neither rapid heat loss in case of cold environment or too slow loss in the case of hot climate under a given climatic conditions. This is what finally, one has to do. So, this is a very, very important exercise that neither you want rapid heat loss that we have to avoid especially in cold climate if the, the garment has to be used in that sort of climate or it should not be too 
slow in the case of hot climate then the sweating will start very fast. So, therefore, these are the two important aspects and therefore, optimization is very very important. Selection criteria of sports fabric, there are basically three important criteria therefore, one is the level of activity, the other one is climatic conditions during wheels and the third is duration of engagement in the sports, for what duration the person is engaged, how long, is it a short duration sport or is it a long duration sport, all the three things we have to keep in mind. Sports fabric architecture if you see generally there are two layers or three layer architectures, three layers especially when it is to be worn in case of winter months, because it should give some warmth to the person. First is the base layer or inner layer, purpose is to control the microclimate by temperature control, humidity, perspiration, wicking these parts will be very very important for the base layer or the inner layer. Mid layer is basically purpose of the warmth, purpose it is the only thing. The outer protection shell which is there, the third layer, this is for waterproofness or windproofness or from the point of view of breathability also should be there. So, it is a three layer or two layer architecture and these are the purpose of the three individual layers. The inner layer purpose as I said earlier climate control that will basically control of humidity and the temperature of the skin, skin temperature should not be allowed to rise. For low activity sports layer must reduce air movement, so that the body heat is not lost very fast. For high activity sports, heat and moisture must be transported from the layer to cool the skin, it should not, should not be allowed to accumulate there. So, this is what that means the function of the inner layer will change depending upon the level of activity. Moisture control and how? Moisture can be controlled by either adsorptions, transportations, or by ventilations. This is how the moisture that accumulate can be controlled. Absorption reduces skin humidity. So, if there are some fibers which can absorb initially, then it can reduce skin humidity but the moisture remains within the clothing due to low evaporation, it will increase heat loss. So, skin irritation in case the surface is wet due to evap low evaporation from it, that means that absorption initially may be beneficial, because when the moisture is accumulating between the very fast layer and the skin, then if there are fibers which are hygroscopic in nature and if they can absorb that moisture, then the relative humidity increase between in the microclimate will be delayed. Therefore, it will act as a buffer. So, that way it may help, but once they absorb the moistures, if there are some fibers or some hygroscopic fibers are there, that they get saturated with the absorption of moisture and still moisture is getting generated. Obviously, now they are all saturated, they cannot absorb any more moistures. Now, the moistures which are getting generated, but will not be able to escape, they will be transformed into finally, liquid sweat. Then the trouble will start, it will increase heat loss because liquid means water in this case, its conductivity is very high and that could be skin irritation as well. 
So, hydrophobic or hydrophilic fabric, the reasons I have already stated that hydrophilic fabric or fabric containing lot of hydrophilic fibers can help initially, it can act as a buffer, but when sweat development is inevitable because it is a high activity spores and it is a long duration spores, then hydrophilic fibers or hydrophilic fabric may not be helpful. So, when sweat is inevitable, hydrophobic fibers is helpful because it can weak away the liquid from the inner layer of the fabric to the outer layer and expose it to the outside environment and then it can probably evaporate. So, it all depends that is depending upon the type of activity during the spores and duration, we have to think whether we go for 100 percent hydrophobic fibers in the inner layer or you go for a mixture of hydrophilic hydrophobic fiber in the inner layer. Because we suppose we expect that moisture generation cannot be so high, in that case some hydrophilic fiber may be helpful because it will reduce the humidity next to the skin and can this fabric then can behave like a buffer layer, which can delay the process of accumulation of sweat. So, hydrophilic fabric, if there is sudden perspiration due to low moderate activity for a short duration, hydrophilic fiber or combination of hydrophobic hydrophilic fiber could be useful. That is what as I said, it all depends and it will finally, in that case will act as a buffer. Then comes the fabric structure, what type of fabric we should choose over the knitted. Open fabrics are always much more durable than a knitted fabrics. So, in some activity sports, we may prefer a no open fabrics, where the most of the construction or the weave type is either plain or twill. Examples are like football shorts or hockey shorts. In that case, such kind of uh, open fabric will be useful and it will have better strength also. A knitted fabric is required wherever stretch is important and we can have low stretch requirement in some cases or high stretch requirement in some other cases. Like normal knitted fabric being more extensible are suitable for application where stretch is in the demand such as swimwear, gymnastic clothing or sports shirt etcetera. Here we do not need generally low stretch fabrics, but there are certain uh, certain games or sports where very high stretch is required. In that case we should go for heated fabrics made from lycra or spandex fibers along with normal or texturized filaments. Swimwear also could be made from spandex along with nylon polyester fibers and tricot weave for swimwear. So, it depends in some cases uh, we can go for high stretch requirements and there this could be useful. And for optimizing comfort, the inner side of the fabric of the clothing should be structured that is ribbed and honeycomb type of structure will be suitable, because it will reduce the contact area between the skin and the fabric because there are ribs. So, in some cases this is going to be quite helpful, the fabric is not going to really get stuck to the skin skin. Sometimes the fabric when the skin become moist, the fabric is too smooth, it will get stuck to the skin and that will give a very you know, a different kind of sensation which is not very pleasurable. So, and it can affect the performance of this of the player as well. So, a rib structure or a honeycomb structure means 
the contact area between the skin and the fabric is going to be less and therefore, and the air will be there in between the ribs and that air is going to help also in terms of breaking the contact as the person is running, moving, whatever he is doing and also there will be some exchange of air in between the inner and outer inner part of the garment and the outer or the, or the outside of the garment. Function of the middle layer is basically insulations. So, wherever we are playing some games which is specific to winter like ice hockey or you know, skiing, then we need a garment where that has to be insulation and the middle layer is going to be an insulating layer. It should be non absorbing material should be selected for long term exposure with limited heating. So, that the moisture is not held in between the fibers or within the fibers that becomes very very important. The other thing is the outer layer basically to protect from the wind, rain and it should give tear abrasion resistance, tear resistance, abrasion resistance and protect from fire or cut. So, accordingly the outer layer has to be chosen. It may be against the chemical or physical agents. The layer can add it, add to the total insulation value. Even the outer layer also in increased insulation the main purpose of the outer layer to protect not to allow the wind or rain to penetrate and it should give some it should have some tear resistance and abrasion resistance. So, in the case of accidental fall the person the injury that can occur can be minimized. Ventilation is important opening have they have to be incorporated within the design. So, that if the person wants to feel suffocation due to accumulation of moisture within the in between the skin and the garment, then if there are openings in the garment, he will open out the garment and he will allow the moisture to escape. So, the humid air should be allowed to escape and there has to be some openings. Or incorporate a porous fabric in the strategic areas of the garments. So, that if we have very you know, perforations or pores, then through those pores air can in fresh air can enter or moist air can escape. So, these are all there are different ways the ventilations can be incorporated into design through fabric selections and also by the proper designing of the garment. Comfort requirement in sportswear, see low physical activity sports, typically people feel that comfort should be important is 55 percent, functionality is 10 percent and durability is 35 percent. For high physical activity sports, comfort importance goes down, functionality is this 20 percent and durability is 55 percent. That is the kind of the study people have conducted and this is what uh, from the survey, this is a kind of survey results that is given here. For specialty types of sports. comfort requirement becomes only 30 percent, functionality becomes very important, it gives an weightage of 50 percent and durability becomes least important only 20 percent. Because these requirements of the customers is important for the designer, because if he 
if the customer is looking for giving so much importance to these three important aspects durability functionality and comfort then in the design these things can these aspects can be incorporated because there cannot be one design which will satisfy all the requirements 100% so designing activity will be always a kind of a kind of balance that one has to one has to do factors that can affect tactile comfort is the surface texture of the yarn so sometimes the tactile sensation is important person should feel comfortable and flatness twist irregularity mass irregularity hairiness these things becomes important yarn surface texture yarn bulk high bulk will always result in high compressibility of the fabric and improves tactile comfort the fabric will you no know, feel soft in this case and yarn bulkiness if we are interested then you see these are the ways to change the bulkiness by the cross sectional shape of fibers with the fiber density fineness twist in the yarn whether the fibers are textured or not especially in the case of filament yarn then we go to the foul weather protective clothing especially cycling running sailing etc all our outdoor sports and here the clothing has to contain a membrane to protect the wearer from rain and allow moisture vapor to pass through as i said that last layer is supposed to protect from rain and also reduce the air drag but at the same time it should allow the moisture to pass through from inner garment to the outside environment that is what is important otherwise the person will feel very very you no know, discomfort hydrophilic lining quickly absorb sweat and spread it out the sweat now can diffuse through the membrane so membranes are basically used and this membrane contains large number of micro pores and through those pores the moisture can escape that sort of fabrics could be used here some idea has been given about lightweight sportswear the kind of yarn that is used generally lined on filament cross sectional shape could be hollow triangular depending upon the requirement of the warmth or we can go for fast wicking type of feature if is important important then polyester yarn with sea slate or multi multi lobal yarns or four digit cross sectional shapes are generally used and textured polyester filament wool or polyester can be mixed together to take care of the absorbency and wicking so wool will be able to moisture absorb lot of moisture also some moisture it can act as a buffer and also wool can help in wicking anti odor or anti bacterial socks or inner wear is it, that is the special feature the fabrics have to be treated by anti bacterial treatments or fabrics may be produced from anti microbial fibers also so fibers are also available with anti microbial properties they can be used then waterproof breathable what we are discussing in the case of that cycle racing the kind of the clothing the person should wear the fabrics are to be coated with pu membrane and it eliminates sticky feeling of pu coating and provides a smooth touch to the skin so membrane is something where there are micro pores are there so it will not allow the water to penetrate but only will allow the moisture to pass through because the size of the moisture molecule is much less than the liquid water molecule with this we close this particular topic and we'll have another topic in the next class thank you